Well, dear students, in the earlier module, we learned about two types of research designs that is exploratory and descriptive. In this module, we will try to discuss and learn about the basics of correlational and experimental designs by which you will be able to aware of how to apply such designs in population studies. The learning objectives of this module are meaning and importance of correlational design, type of relationships in correlations, strength of relationship in correlation, types of correlational designs and advantages and disadvantages of correlational designs. And also we will discuss the meaning and importance of experimental designs, procedures and the conditions of experimental designs, types of experimental designs and advantages and disadvantages of experimental designs. So, first we will concentrate on correlation and research designs. The meaning wise if you see correlation means it is simply an association. A correlational study is a quantitative method of research in which the researcher will have two or more quantitative variables from the same group of subjects and he or she tries to determine if there is a relationship or covariation or not between the two variables. For example, in population studies if we say there is a positive correlation between the years of schooling and the age at marriage two variables are involved. Likewise, this design is part of non experimental research design since it does not involve manipulation of the variables of interest. This design simply aims to determine the relationship between two variables and how strongly these variables relate to one another. It also provides empirical evidence suggesting two or more variables that is bivariate are related or not thereby it contribute to a deeper understanding of the variables being studied and their relationship. Now, uh, having uh, learned about the basics of uh, correlation, we will uh, see the type of relationships in correlation. Generally, the correlation in correlation four types of relationships are there. The first one is about positive relationship or positive correlation we used to say. A positive relationship correlation is in existence when two variables increase or decrease together and especially when one variable tends to be associated positively with the other. The second one is negative relationship or negative correlation. A negative relationship is in existence when one variable increases, the other decreases or vice versa and specifically when one variable is likely to be associated negatively with the other. The third one is a peculiar uh, type of relationship that is called curvilinear relationship. This is a type of relationship between two variables in which as one variable increases, so does the other variable. However, this works only up to a certain point and then in spite of an increase in the first variable, the second one will start to decrease. This is some sort of inverted U shape relationship. Such relationship is also likely to be an U shape relationship. And the fourth one, uh, fourth type of relationship in correlation is uh, no relationship or flat or some people used to say no correlation. A no relationship or no correlation is when there is a no visible or specific pattern between the two variables under study. This diagram explains uh, the relation type of relationships in correlation. The first one shows positive correlation where I already discussed that when one variable increases the second variable also increases in a uh, parallelly rectangular type. On the other hand in negative correlation one decreases the other one decreases. The third one bottom left is a U shape relationship then the fourth one is about inverted U shape relationship and the last one is about the there is no correlation where the variables are scattered around the line. Now having learnt about the types of relationship, the strength of relationship in correlation is mostly uh, measured through the Pearson coefficient r which describes the strength that exists between two variables for linear type of relationship. It varies between plus 1.0 and minus 
a plus 1.0 means a very strong positive relationship whereas a minus 1.0 means a very strong negative relationship here r equals to 0 means it, it would mean no relationship but in reality these types of perfect and strong relationships are rare to see in social science research the strength of association plays a significant role in interpreting the positive and negative associations between two variables at the time of hypothesis testing. Strictly speaking, correlation is not useful for establishing a causal relationship, but it can be used for prediction to support a theory to measure test, retest reliability, etc. Well, broadly the types of correlations designs are two types. Number one is a relational correlational designs and the other type is a predictional correlational designs. We will learn briefly about relational correlational designs. The basic purpose of this type of design is to explain the relationship between two or more variables. This is a specific design known as a simple bivariate correlation design. There are certain characteristics associated with uh, uh, rational correlational designs. First and foremost one is two or more variables are to be collected from each person in the sample. Secondly, data is to be collected at a single point in time. Thirdly, the data is analyzed as a single group. Next is a correlation coefficient that is Pearson product moment correlation or multiple R will be reported and discussed in terms of strength, direction and statistical significance. Interpretations from the statistical results are uh, drawn to describe the relationship. Having learned about uh, the rational correlational designs, now we will move on to prediction correlational designs. Through this design, one can identify the variables that can effectively predict some outcome or criterion. The variable being predicted is called the criterion variable or in normal term it is known as dependent variable and the variable or variables being used to predict the criterion are called predictors or in general, general terms they are called independent or explanatory variables. When a study involves only two variables, the predictive relationship is estimated with a statistical procedure called simple linear regression. When more than one predictor variable is used to predict a criterion, the analysis is called multiple linear regression. This is an extremely powerful statistical procedure that can estimate the collective as well as the individual contributions of all predictive variables used in the model. Like in the case of a rational uh, correlational model, uh, in the case of prediction models also there are certain characteristics are associated. For example, number one two or more variables both predictors as well as criterion are collected from each individual in the sample. The data is analyzed as a single group. Here also a correlation coefficient typically a multiple r is reported and discussed in terms of the strength, direction and the statistical significance of the relationship amongst the variables. Then the contribution of each predictor variable is examined in terms of its unique contribution to the prediction of the criterion variable which is also known as regression coefficient. A regression coefficient is uh, produced which can be used to predict the criterion variable from data collected only on the predictor variables. Interpretations from the statistical results are drawn about the predictive process. Well, uh, the, the correlational designs have certain advantages or uses. First and foremost one, researcher can clearly and easily see if there is a relationship between variables and also can be displayed in a graphical form. It allows the researcher to investigate naturally occurring variables that may be unethical or in practice to test experimentally. If there is a relationship between two variables, we can make predictions about one from another. These designs will also be helpful in concurrent validity that is correlation between a new measure and an established measure can be estimated and interpreted. The researchers can test retest reliability that is to see whether the measures under consideration are consistent. 
and also can examine inter rater reliability that is among different raters or observers. Correlation designs are also very much helpful in theory verification which may be stated as predictive validity. Well, the correlation designs also have certain disadvantages and limitations. Firstly, no cause and effect can be determined in these uh, designs. This means that just because two variables share a relationship does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. Likewise, there could be other variables mediating the relationship. The role of other variables mediating the relationship between the variables under study cannot be ruled out. Thirdly, the direction of the effect cannot be determined like it is difficult to say one variable causes another based on the direction of the association between two variables. And fourthly, in correlation designs most of the relationships or associations between the variables assumed to be linear. Well, so far we have discussed about the correlational designs. Now, we will discuss briefly about experimental design. Uh, the meaning wise experimental research is designed to assess the effects of particular variables on a phenomenon by keeping the other variables constant or controlled. It aims at determining whether and in what manner variables are related to each other. The factor which is influenced by other factor or factors is called a dependent variable. The experimental design is also stated as a blueprint of the procedure that enables the researcher to test his or her hypothesis by reaching valid conclusions about relationships between independent and dependent variables. Hence, these designs are also called as hypothesis testing research studies. In these designs, the nature of relationship between independent variables and dependent variables is perceived and stated in the form of causal hypothesis. A closely controlled procedure is adopted to test them. Briefly about the procedure followed in experimental designs. Firstly, two identical groups need to be selected, namely there is a control group and a, an experimental group. These should be identical in terms of the characteristics of the phenomenon under study. The experimental group is exposed to an experimental variable or stimulus otherwise it is called as intervention. The control group is not exposed to the experimental variable. The difference between the experimental and control groups outcome is attributed to the effect of the experimental variable that is stimulus or uh, intervention. At times, a single group may be used as both the control and experimental group also. There are certain conditions for applying experimental designs. First and foremost one is there should be the possibility to select exactly identical groups. The target group should be amenable for experimentation. Thirdly, the researcher should be able to identify all the independent variables that affect the dependent variables under study. The non-experimental variable should be kept constant so as to study the effect of experimental variables on the phenomenon. Now, coming to the types of experimental designs, broadly three types of experimental designs we use in social science research. Firstly, before and after a design with a single group, the after only design with a control group, the before and after design with a control group. We will briefly uh, learn about these three groups. The first one is before and after design with a single group. Here the researcher knows that a population is being or has been exposed to an intervention and wishes to study the impact of the intervention on the population. In this design baseline information that is pre-test or before observation usually collected from the sample respondents based on the recall of the situation before the intervention. Then the change in the dependent variable is measured by the difference between the before that is baseline and after that is data assets. This is very rough because the data used before and after are not comparable and some of the effects or change in dependent variable may be due to other factors. The diagrammatic presentation of 
before and after design is provided here. Here you can see the study population before observation the baseline data has been collected in terms of x where afterwards that is before uh, intervention is introduced after post intervention the end line data is collected in terms of y. The intervention effect will be calculated y minus x. The second type of uh, experimental design is the after only design with a control group. Here the researcher selects two groups preferably on random basis of populations of which one will be considered as experimental group which will be exposed to the intervention or stimulus and the other one as control group which is not going to be exposed to any intervention. After the required time for intervention end line data will be collected from both the groups. The difference between the data of two groups that is the change per se will be estimated. If the difference is higher that is change is higher in the experimental group than the control group then one can attribute that the difference is due to the intervention. Well, the like in the case of the previous one here too the diagram presentation of the after only design with the control group is given. As told in the discussion the experimental group intervention is introduced and the end line data is collected after intervention. In the control group no intervention is introduced and the end line data has been collected as in the case of uh, experimental group. Here the interventional effect is y minus z. The another uh, type of design experimental design is the before and after design with a control group. Here the researcher selects two groups preferably on a random basis of populations. One will be considered as an experimental group which will be exposed to the intervention or stimulus and the other one is a, a control group which is not going to be exposed to any intervention. In both the groups the baseline data will be collected that is before intervention. Then the experimental group is exposed to the intervention whereas such intervention is not offered to the control group. After the required time of intervention an end line data will be collected from both the groups. The difference between the baseline and the end line data that is change per se in both the groups will be estimated. If such a difference or change in the case of the population of the experimental group is higher than the difference or change in the case of the control group then one can attribute that difference of change is due to the intervention. Here also the diagramic presentation shows that there are two groups are there experimental group and the control group. In the both the groups baseline data is collected in terms of x control group as y and only in the experimental group intervention is introduced and in the control group no intervention is introduced. But in the both the groups after the intervention after the required time the end line data has been collected which in the case of experimental group it is called as y and in the case of control group it is called as b. Here the intervention effect can be calculated drawing the equation like y minus x minus of b minus a. Then here also the like in the case of uh, correlational designs s designs too have certain advantages. In here information collected is highly objective and more reliable through these designs possible to study the causal relationships between variables that is independent versus dependent variables. Further the effect of extraneous variables can be controlled more effectively and these designs can be easily replicated and further through these designs one can be able to get reliable and valid results. Now here the experimental designs too have certain limitations. Their use in social science research is complicated, difficult to establish comparable experimental and control groups due to variations in the characteristics of the experimental units and our settings. There are limits to experimentation among human beings as the human behavior varies across persons. Experimentation is often difficult, expensive and time consuming. It can be used to study the present only but not the past, future since social events occur continuously. It is also difficult and impossible to control all variable involved in the study. Well, in sum, in this module the discussion is made about the various aspects 
related to the correlation and experimental research designs such as meaning and importance of correlation and experimental designs, conditions and procedures followed in carrying out correlation and experimental designs, types of correlation and experimental designs and finally, advantages and disadvantages or limitations of correlation and experimental designs. Thank you.